everybody. My name is Eric Bruno. I'm a systems engineer in New York. Being in New York, I work very closely uh, with Wall Street, the financial companies uh, on Wall Street. Um, and it's a good thing because I have a background in finance and I'm talking about more than the money I lose in my 401k. That's a different story. Um, I worked at Reuters for a number of years, uh, building real-time trading systems, foreign exchange trading systems, as well as uh, news and quote data feeds in both Java and C++. So I've worked in both sides. I can relate to probably most of the, the problems that you guys deal with. Okay, the agenda. I'm going to skip through a lot of slides. I'm going to go real quickly. I have a demo. We probably all want to get to that pretty quick. And plus, a lot of my slides are going to echo what you've seen from both Greg and Doug. We're going to talk about real time, what it is. Most of you understand that. We're going to talk about a particular problem space that I've been working in, in the financial sector. We're going to talk about the architecture of the demo that I will be giving you. We'll do the demo, and that'll probably be it for time. Okay, the problem with Java is that garbage collection can occur at any time. So, and that's uh, not the only problem. That is one of the largest. But anything else can happen, such as JIT. The JIT can occur at any time while your code is executing. Even if the code you're executing has been JIT compiled already, it can be recompiled because your code takes a different path and it has to be re-optimized. And there are also other things running in the system. Any other higher priority thread than your Java process threads will interrupt you. And that's, uh, that's the problem space. It's, a, it's beyond garbage collection. In the financial world, you and I, most of the time when we, uh, we trade stocks, either we call a broker or we do it online, we enter a market order. And that's entering an order to buy or sell stocks at a market price, what it's trading at at that particular time. But there are other types of orders that you can put into a system, and that's stop and limit orders. Um, basically, what that means is, if I own stock, um, I bought it at a particular price. Hopefully, it went up. Not always the case, but let's say it is in this case. Um, I can put a stop order in the system to, uh, with a broker or with, a, with some exchange to say, I want to trade if it ever goes below a certain value so I can limit my loss. Um, there is also such a thing as a limit order that says, if it ever hits a particular price, it has to trade at that price, no lower, or it would have to buy no higher. Um, the difference is that with a stop order, um, it can trade at a particular, the price you set it at or lower if it's, a, if it's a sell, or at a price or higher if it's a buy. And there's usually a particular amount of money you pay for that type of order. Um, a limit order is very strict. It has to trade at the price you put it into the system. Hence, you pay a little bit more for that because it's riskier for the broker that you go through. So we're going to talk about that today because if, let's say you implemented that system in Java and the market is moving rapidly because it's a busy day on, on Wall Street. Um, you've implemented this system. You have a real-time data feed coming in. Your Java application is processing it. You have some limit or stop orders in the system. The price is moving down. Let's say you hit the price for a particular limit or stop order. Because garbage collection or something else happens at that particular time, you don't respond to that event in time. The market continues to move. The difference in that movement equates to a loss. That's a bad thing. That was a particular slide on the buy side. This also occurs on the sell side. So we need to do something about that. And that thing we have to do is real-time Java. If your system is being implemented in, in Java. And most of these points you've seen in other slides. Uh, real-time, some people think of it as real fast, and that's not true. Uh, what it really means is that you have to respond to a particular event within a bounded amount of latency or within a predictable period of time. In this case, it guarantees that a market's not going to move beyond uh, certain entry prices for orders. Real-time Java, in particular, allows you to discriminate between certain events that occur in a system. So it gives you a lot of control beyond just the predictability. And uh, you can handle certain events in certain orders. So it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, this slide is completely a review. JSR 001 we've spoken about, thanks, thanks to Doug. Um, some of the attributes of Java real-time is that it's 100% Java compatible. You can take your existing Java code in class or jar form and run it on Java, the Java real-time VM today without a problem. It's, uh, in fact, it's 1.5 compliant. Um, it supports non-real-time code as well as code that has soft and hard real-time constraints. It gives you true high-resolution timers, which is not true for Java today, standard Java necessarily. And it also gives you um, a bunch more pri real priorities, like we've spoken about. And the latency is about 20 microseconds for no heap real-time threads. 
and we were talking about hundreds of microseconds for real-time garbage collection. If you look at the facilities in Java real time as a set of tools you can use in your code, and this is what I try to go over with, uh, with the companies I work with, you can start from the top, um, and it's, this requires the least amount of change to your code, and just implement, uh, use the real time garbage collector by taking your threads, replacing them with real time threads, setting the priorities appropriately, and um, the most, for the most part, that solves most of the problems. Um, you can work your way down based upon your deadlines. Uh, how tight they are, and implement some more advanced features, uh, which includes no heap real time threads, scoped memory, immortal memory. As you work your way down, it requires some more changes to your code. But what I've gone over with these financial companies is that it's not rocket science. It's, uh, it's something that's doable. It requires you to think ahead a little bit more than just straightforward Java programming. But you know, that's something we should do anyway. We should plan ahead before we implement a system with such deadlines. This slide goes over why Java real time currently requires Solaris. Solaris has a lot of features uh, for real time enablement built in. Uh, I'm going to skip right down to the very bottom here. And uh, some of the most important features are the ability to create processor sets. You can take, let's say you have a four core or four processor system. You can take two of those processors, define a processor set for them, run your Java application on that processor set, and those two processors or cores, they're equal in my mind here. Uh, will be dedicated to your Java process. And on top of that, you can also do interrupt shielding on that processor set and know that your Java application will never be interrupted even by low-level interrupts. All right, so let's talk about the demo architecture. There are two main components. We have a component that simulates a market feed. It, it itself happens to be a real-time application. That is the quote publisher application you see in the box on the left. On the right is a trading engine. It's supposed to be the trading system. It's a very simple trading engine. When it starts, it loads up with uh, limit and stop orders, reads it from a file, puts it into the system. Just like you and I might put in if we had some stock and we wanted to put a limit or stop order in the system, you put it in well ahead of where you think the market might be going. Um, and these two communicate over JMS. We tried to um, create a situation that was similar to some of the financial companies we're working with, and they happened to use JMS in their distributed architecture, um, so we used it in the demo as well. And there's a GUI uh, that just shows what thing, what's happening in the system. You'll see how that works. The Quote Publisher is a real-time application itself, reads data from a data feed, pumps it out over JMS through using the Sun application server. And uh, let's we'll just skip through the slide here. Uh, the trading engine itself is also a real-time application. I have different versions of it. One is not a real-time application. It's a standard Java application. The other is a real-time implementation. And the third is a no-heap real-time implementation. Uh, going from the non-real-time to the real-time was a very simple change. I just took my threads and I turned them into real-time threads. Going further to implement no-heap real-time thread architecture, which you see here, I used immortal memory. Um, what happens is uh, there's a market manager and an order manager component. The, mar the market manager component, since it uses JMS, it's running in a real-time thread. It listens on a topic for these market price updates. We chose a subset of te 10 equities for the demo itself. It updates uh, a memory, a region of memory in the mortal memory, a uh, data structure in the mortal memory, excuse me, that stores the latest trade prices for those 10 equities. Um, the order manager is a no-heap real-time thread that goes into a one millisecond loop. It could be a tighter deadline, but I'm running it on a laptop, so uh, that, that was good enough deadline for it. Uh, it's constantly comparing the orders that are in the order book against what the current market is at. If something were to happen, let's say this weren't a real-time implementation, it's, no, no, it's a non-real-time implementation, uh, the market can continue to move, you get more updates, and garbage collection could kick in, and the order manager will miss its deadline and will miss the fact that the market is moving and will lose money. 